In recent years, we've gotten used to seeing videos like this one. But what we don't see are the hundreds of hours of surveillance and intelligence gathering that go into every successful strike. Air Force imagery analysts and remotely piloted aircraft pilots comb through mounds of video data, looking for the slightest hint of a threat or enemy target. It's like looking for a needle just a few pixels long in a digital haystack from thousands of miles away. Long hours requiring intense focus can push these airmen's brains to the limits of human endurance. But Air Force scientists are researching ways to help them by minimizing strain and maximizing effectiveness with a process known as brain stimulation. What if there was a simple way to enhance your alertness, your attention to detail, boost your ability to focus, and even your capacity to learn and retain new information. No, this isn't some late night infomercial pitch or Hollywood sci-fi plot. There's actual scientific research that shows this is possible with the help of just a few strategically placed electrodes. And much of the study in this field is happening at the Air Force Research Lab in Ohio. At the Applied Neuroscience branch of the Air Force Research Lab's Human Performance Wing, Dr. Andy McKinley and his team are conducting an experiment. Uh, we're putting a couple of electrodes on the body, one on the head, one on the arm, and we pass a really weak current in between, and the current makes it easier or harder for the neurons underneath to, to fire, the brain cells to fire. So you can either increase activity by making it easier for the neurons to fire, or you can reverse the polarity and make it harder for those neurons to fire and therefore decrease activity. It's called transcranial direct current stimulation, and it's actually been around for several decades. But the Air Force is discovering new benefits. This technology started in the medical domain to um, improve symptoms for a variety of neurological ailments, things like a major depressive disorder, schizophrenia, and uh, researchers were finding that the healthy control groups were experiencing improvements in cognition above their normal baselines. And so that got us thinking, well, maybe we could use this for military applications and enhance cognition for Air Force-specific applications. We have found that this technology works really well for things like um, memory, attention, and learning. A lot of the things that the Air Force does uh, requires those types of skills. So when you start thinking about things like uh, image analysis where people are doing mundane tasks for long periods of time, it's difficult to maintain attention. Uh, remotely piloted aircraft is another example. And those just happen to be some of the Air Force's most in-demand skill sets right now so valuable that the Air Force is willing to let Dr. McKinley zap people's brains in order to enhance those skills. But this isn't Dr. Frankenstein's lab or anything nearly that dramatic. It's actually just an augmentation of the brain's natural functions. So when you do anything, there is a network of activity inside your brain. Different pieces of brain start uh, activating and turning on and communicating with each other. The way that the brain stimulation works is we can selectively change the activity in a way that helps with the consolidation of new neural connections. So when you learn something new, there are new connections between brain cells that establish that new memory. And what we can do is we can help that occur earlier and faster. A good way to think about it is it doesn't necessarily do something unnatural to brain activity. It's simply boosting the natural activity that's taking place in whatever task that you're doing. So for example, if I were to stimulate your brain and you're just staring at the wall, it's probably not going to have a, a large effect. Um, but if I stimulate your brain while you're doing something, it's going to increase the activity that's naturally occurring and, uh, and you may have a, a performance benefit uh, depending on what you're doing. According to Dr. McKinley, test subjects who've received the brain stim treatment are showing measurable, sometimes remarkable improvements in their attention, memory, and alertness. This has been a very exciting uh, vein of, of research for me. Uh, this is probably the most exciting thing I've been involved with, and 
we went in with some expectations of improvements just based on the literature, but what we've been finding are very large improvements. So we found at least a doubling of attention span. We found in two different types of learning that we can double the rate the folks learn the material. And these, these effects are, are fairly long lasting. For airmen in high demand intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance career fields, the Air Force sees this as a potential game changer. By pinpointing and stimulating areas of the brain associated with cognition, or by inhibiting areas that aren't, RPA sensor operators or imagery analysts can get a mental boost that's much better than from pounding endless energy drinks. It's more specific than using a drug. Uh, when you use a drug, even something as simple as caffeine, it affects everything. It gets you in your bloodstream and affects the entire brain. The thing that's nice about this is that we can target uh, specific areas. It can also reduce fatigue. So we found people that have the treatment have significantly fewer symptoms of fatigue and their performance is better. Now, we don't normally associate combat fatigue with sitting in front of a computer console, but it's real and it's a growing concern. The modern RPA program began in 1995, and it took 16 years for the Air Force's drone fleet to log 1 million flying hours. But by late 2013, only two and a half years later, that number had doubled. Today, RPA crews are logging three times more flying hours per year than traditional pilots. So yes, combat fatigue is a real threat to the mission. But the Air Force Research Lab is pioneering methods of identifying fatigue or high stress levels in real time using nothing more than small video cameras. These cameras are tracking things like blink rate, eye movement, and pupil dilation, which can all be potential indicators of increased stress or fatigue. The cameras provide important physiological data and don't require any sort of sensor or equipment to be in physical contact with the subject. For researchers like Ethan Blackford, these non-contact camera sensors have enormous potential. Anytime you can provide information that otherwise wasn't there without interfering with the operator is a win. The various places where we've identified as being useful would be in RPA operations or cyber operations or any other operator who's, who's at a desk for a large amount of time and could be observed with these cameras. Another key indicator of stress and combat fatigue is heart rate. And the lab is even working on cameras that can take your pulse. In a way, they can actually see your heartbeat. We're sensing a, a very small color change which corresponds to the blood pulse uh, throughout the cardiac cycle as it travels to the microvasculature layer of the skin and the facial region. This is a, a very small color change which we're able to perceive with imaging equipment in a camera but you can't perceive uh, using just your eyes. You can think of various different situations where you might be stressed or you've just been running and your heart is pounding. We can actually pick up those indicators so if you're stressed or something happens during your work, we can see that spike in heart rate which can all be indicative of a person's workload or stress and help us understand how the individual is doing uh, while they're performing a task. The scientists at the Research Lab's Applied Neuroscience Branch are committed to optimizing the cognitive performance of the warfighter. And as the Air Force leans harder on its image analysts, sensor operators, and RPA pilots, that mission becomes more important than ever. Warfare in and of itself is a human endeavor. And if we can enhance the human piece of that, their ability to think and to make decisions, uh, this could really give us a, a strategic advantage in the future.